this tutorial, we will be covering key commands and some aspects of the FL Studio workflow that will help make you into an efficient power user of FL Studio. The first place you can improve your efficiency is by learning some of the various key commands available. For example, the Tab key allows you to quickly cycle through the open windows in your project. Use Shift Tab to reverse the cycle order. The windows themselves can be individually activated or opened and closed by using the corresponding key commands. F5 for the playlist, F6 for the step sequencer, F7 for the piano roll, F8 for the browser, and F9 for the mixer. You might find it easy to just flip through windows with the tab key, and then just use F7 to open and close the piano roll whenever you need it. To close any currently active window, either press the associated key command for that window, or press the escape key. When working in the step sequencer, there are a number of useful commands. Use the up and down arrow keys to select the next or previous channel. To select more channels, hold down shift and left click the other channels. To delete a selected channel, hold down the control key and press delete. When working on a big song, it is useful to group different sounds according to function, for example a drum kit made up of separate sampler channels. Group selected channels by holding down the ALT key and pressing G. When grouped, the channels will only appear when you select the group's name in the channel display filter. To quickly jump through groups, use the page up and page down keys. When editing sequences in the step sequencer, there are a few little tricks to make things easier. To randomise the channel, press the key combination ALT R, and to quickly send a sequence to the piano roll editor, press the combination ALT P. The left and right arrow keys by themselves will take you to the next and previous pattern. And to quickly name the current pattern, press F2 and type in the name. To create a new pattern and name it, press F4. Moving over now to the playlist. First of all, given that you can spend an extensive period of time editing in the playlist, you might find it useful to fill the FL Studio window with just the playlist by pressing the Enter key. Pressing it again returns it back to its original size. For now, we'll just keep it at the full size. One really neat navigational aspect in the playlist is the ability to use the wheel on your mouse to move around the window. Just rolling the wheel up and down will scroll through the pattern list. If you hold down the shift key while scrolling, you will be able to move horizontally through your arrangement. Holding down the control key while rolling the wheel allows you to zoom in around the spot where the mouse is currently placed. Moving through the timeline can also be achieved by pressing the left and right arrow keys. Much of this navigational functionality is also available in the piano roll editor and the event editor as well. The number keypad on your computer keyboard has some helpful functionality built into it. To fast forward the playhead, press the asterisk key, and to rewind, press the forward slash. To fast forward or rewind in four bar jumps, hold down the control key while pressing these. To make arranging in the playlist easier, you'll often use markers to define song sections. You create a marker by going to the playlist options menu and choosing add time marker. A new time marker will be placed at the start of your song. To place the new marker at another point in the song, click and drag the leftmost part of the marker to the position you want it. Markers make it easy to jump to different sections of your arrangement. To jump to the next or previous song marker, hold down the ALT key whilst pressing the asterisk or the forward slash on the number keypad. You can select areas in the timeline by holding down the control key and then clicking and dragging to define a cycle playback region. The same can be achieved by double clicking in the timeline and on the second click, keep the mouse key held down and then drag to define the selection. To move the marker region, hold down shift and drag. To set selections that don't align to the timeline grid, hold down the ALT key. Double clicking on a marker name will also select the area under the marker duration. Hold down Control Alt whilst pressing asterisk or forward slash to select the next or previous marker section. You can quickly jump around in the song during playback by clicking at the point where you want to jump to. At the next bar, the timeline will jump to this new spot without interrupting the timing of your song. This also works by using the fast forward and rewind key commands I mentioned earlier. Note that this works in this way only when you have live mode switched on in the playlist options menu. See the live mode video tutorial for more on this mode. With live mode off, the song will jump to wherever you click in the timeline without syncing to the tempo. When you are heavily editing a song, you'll find yourself wanting to pause in the current play position. As opposed to stopping and automatically jumping back to the song or selection start, hold down control when you press the spacebar to do this. Control spacebar will then resume the playback from the current position. The tools that you use when editing in the playlist also have their own key commands. The draw tool, which you might like to think of as the pencil, is selected by pressing P. The brush tool, by pressing B. The delete tool by pressing D, the cut tool by pressing C, the select tool by pressing E, and the zoom tool by pressing Z. Within a particular tool, you also have other tools available by using modifiers. Control will switch to the selection tool, shift will switch to the cut tool, alt will allow you to make edits that do not snap to the current grid settings, for example moving a pattern. Most of the functionality I've described here in the playlist window also works within the piano roll and the event edit windows as well. The piano roll though has the additional playback tool which has the key command Y. Also all of the piano roll edit tools have their own key commands so you might want to gradually learn them as well. A few neat editing tips in the piano roll are press shift and the up or down arrow keys to transpose the selected notes chromatically. 
control up or down will transpose them by an octave, and shift left and right will shift the notes to the left and right by the current snap to grid settings. So now you have learnt a few new keyboard shortcuts, it's time to look at some other aspects of the FL Studio workflow. You are probably used to using the browser for dragging and dropping samples that you have stored on your hard drive. The browser also contains a wealth of functionality that relates to the construction and management of your FL Studio projects. This appears under the browser entry labelled Current Project. The first entry is History, which provides an undo history list that you can browse to pinpoint and jump back to a previous edit state in your session. This will show up to as many undo states as you have set in the general settings Undo History. Click on an undo state to revert back to that edit point. Underneath the undo folder is the automation folder. Here you can manage all automation contained in your project. Automation that appears here is automation contained within patterns, playlist sequences, as well as the automation contained in the main automation, such as track mixer automation, which also appears as a pattern in the playlist. Clicking on an automated parameter's name will open up the event editor, allowing you to view and edit the automation. This kind of access becomes useful when your project is quite large and complex, allowing you to quickly hone in on a particular aspect of your arrangement. Under the Automation folder is the Generators folder. This lists all generators included in your project. Clicking on a generator name reveals all controls that can have automation or external MIDI remote signals attached to them. Right-click on the control name to assign it or to edit its automation. Under the Generators is the same thing for all effects contained in your project. Under Effects is a folder called Remote Control. This lists all parameters that you have linked either external MIDI remote control signals or automation clips to. Left-clicking on the parameter name allows you to quickly assign a new signal to control it with.